What's up guys? Welcome to Exactly Gaming. My name is Zach and today we are back with more 60 seconds re -atomized. Now last time we left off we tried to do it with just the girls. It was girls only and we failed. We didn't do too hot. So in this one I'm gonna try to do just the adults. That way if either of the people who are leaving die the other person isn't screwed. So I'm gonna start with Ted. I'm gonna put it on Fat Man difficulty. Let's see. What, what else does it do? Pack suitcase, holiday luggage. Let's put it on little boy because I want to have some fun. I want to have some fun like a little boy would have fun. I know that sounds weird. That's a weird thing to have said out loud. But I'm going to run it through just because I want to see if there's other cool endings. I want to have time to play around with it. So if you guys want to play on super hard difficulty because you're a cool tough guy, then you can do that, okay? But I'm a little boy and I'm playing on little boy today. Okay. And so we got flashlight, water, radio, map in here. Wow. A lot of good stuff. So we'll start here. We'll start in this room. <clears throat> And then we'll come back to this room. Flashlight, got it. And we'll grab the wife, nope. Checkerboard, there we go. Checkerboard, boom, look at all that. Now we'll grab the wife. We'll grab this rifle. There we go, put everything in there. Grab this water, grab this food. Hey, first aid kit. No, we'll come back for that. That's okay. First aid kit we're definitely coming back for. Because that's going to be a lifesaver, literally. Thought I grabbed that, but I must not have. Gas mask will be necessary. Oh, jeez. We didn't have that much time. But you know what? <clears throat> we'll see what that does. We're, we're on we're on easy, so we should have some stuff in the shelter. I feel okay with that. Feel feel all right with that. That's okay. That's okay. The kids didn't make it. The kids, the kids didn't make it. Okay. You know what? It's it is sad sometimes, but sometimes you gotta you gotta move on. All right. Day one. Day one. Wow. We're doing all right. We got an axe. We got a briefcase. We got soup. We got water. We got a rifle. A gun. Yeah. We're we're loaded up. We're loaded up. Just the two of us. There wasn't enough time to get the kids, but surely this is just a drill and they're okay, right? We vaguely remember stashing things, so we got an axe, yeah, bullets, and a lock. Hey, look, we found the suitcase we grabbed upstairs. Yeah, that's awesome. Don't have that much food, no one's complaining, but even canned soup, yeah, okay. So we only have three cans of soup. So we definitely need to go on missions to get more soup. But that's the good thing about having a gas mask and it just being two of us, is that if one of us leaves, they're gonna eat way less, and if they die, we're okay. And all right, Dolores, let's send, yeah. Our ammunition is missing. There's no way it was stolen. <clears throat> missing already ammunition. That's, that's rough. As long as the flashlight's okay, we're fine. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, what's left? Thirsty and thirsty. Good thing we got plenty of water. Let's send Dolores. Why not? Ooh, she can send, yeah, send her with the suitcase. What does sending her with the suitcase and all the stuff do? Give her the gas mask and give her the map. Why not? Yeah, let's let's set her up for success. Gas mask and a map, and then an empty hand. You have an empty hand. I could have sent her with a flashlight, but I don't know if sending with all that stuff actually does anything. It it may not. Dolores on her way to the surface. Yeah, she should make it back pretty soon. As we were considering alternatives to the canned soup diet, a sudden knock at the door broke our line of thought. It turned out we were visited by a band of survivors who were in pretty bad shape. All they wanted was to get something to drink, a bite to eat, or at least clean bandages and medicine to attend to their wounded. Sorry, that's a lot of valuable stuff, and we don't have a lot of stuff to give away. We're trying, we're going for longevity here. I'm also not going to listen to the radio much, because I don't want to go for the military safety thing. I don't want to get rescued by the military. We can tell our guests were not thrilled with our refusal. Their eyes alone were enough to understand how much they needed those supplies. They did not beg, but simply turned around and left in an unknown direction. Maybe they have more luck elsewhere. Maybe. Right. It's really weird when you get the feeling that something is watching you. Our shelter is tiny, but it's been bugging us for a while now. We checked all the closets and so no one's hiding there. Is there something alive down here besides us? Maybe a rodent of some kind? If so, we need to show it that we are dominant species in a little paradise of ours. Let's not use the gun. Let's not start shooting in the shelter. We can maybe use an axe and scare something, but I don't think we need to start shooting things. Whatever it was, it's dead now. Quite dead. Maybe there's more hiding somewhere in one of those nasty little holes. So he's thirsty and hungry. It's alright, we got we got that. 
What's that? A galloping horse? We rushed to the door and were greeted by two men, dressed as though they come from medieval fair. We identified the source of the sound. One of them was holding two rocks and hitting them against each other constantly, while the other was skipping and pretending to be a rider. They said they were looking for some antique cup, but they got lost and we'd be most grateful if they help them check our map, provided we have one. Well, I'm sorry, but we don't, guys, and you're... You're out galloping around like Monty Python style, like with the fake galloping or whatever. We couldn't contain our laughter and our guests took offense. They ran off shouting that our ancestors were rodents and smelled like forest fruits. Well, yeah, that works. That's how it works. We're either going crazy this entire shelter is crawling with little insects, or worse. It's worse. They're spiders, and not some miniature ones, but huge, furry, very creepy beasts. We've got to do something about them. Yeah. We'll use our stuff. We don't want to get sick. Don't want to get sick sick. All right, where's Dolores? She's been gone a while. She should be back by now. If there's one thing that can drive spiders away and stop us climbing the furniture, it's the bug killing spray. That was right time to unleash this deadly weapon and the results were excellent. 404 of those little bastards? We even found a water bottle stashed in the corner. Hell yeah. Alright. Knock knock. This sounds always surprised and confuses us. Could mean anything good or bad. We're always curious. Should we open the door? Eh, nah, sure. Sure. Day 9. <clears throat> uh oh, that's not good. Someone started shooting us. We closed the hatch as quickly as we could because shot or two grazed us. Yeah, Ted, you'll get that. And you're thirsty. All right. We'll heal you up. We can barely breathe in this damn shelter. For the last couple of hours, the situation is beginning noticeably worse. There might be something wrong with the ventilation system. Maybe it's stuck? If that's the case, we need to look into fixing it right away. Let's just take a look with the flashlight. Hey, flashlight's still fine, too. And Ted's fine. The obvious thing to do when a vent is blocked is to check what's blocking it. However, when you shine your flashlight on a hive of mutated insects, these things usually go from bad to worse. The angry hive is gone, but the insects have some biting before they fled. Hey, but good thing we healed him in the interim. What, what? We woke up to a dripping sound today and noticed there's something leaking in the pipes. That green liquid looked innocent enough. Yeah, let's, let's use that scout book and clean that up. Hey, Dolores is back. She was gone a while. Hopefully she brought back a lot of food. Nope, that's not great. She brought back a ton of water, though, apparently. All right, so she brought everything back. Problem solved, plus two water. She's probably hungry and tired. Yep, he's hungry. So we don't have a lot of food. Ted's definitely gonna go. Our patience is wearing thin. We thought it'd be a good idea to take a quick look outside to see if there's any trouble in the areas. So we're about to step out a pair of eye animal eyes flash in the dark. Uh, yeah, use the flashlight. I bet it's that dog. Yeah, it's the dog. Decided to check what's coming. Hey, stay for the night. Hey, doggy. All right. Hungry, tired, thirsty. And he's probably just thirsty, yeah. Plenty of water. He's gonna go. He's gonna bring that. He's gonna bring the gas mask. And the map. Why not? What if he just brought the gas mask and he could carry back other stuff? That'd be cool. Let's try that. Let's let him. Let, let him take the briefcase and bring it back full of stuff. Ted left for the surface. We hope he'll be back soon. And he brought the gas mask. Hungry and tired. All right. High time we stop wondering what's going on. Nah. No radio. We don't need the, the military rescuing us this time. <clears throat> Not this time, at least. Day 14. Okay. Okay. They say ignorance is bliss. Another day without any clue what's going on might not necessarily kill us. Yep. She's just tired, so she can just chill and rest. If there's anyone who rescues from this health situation, it's the government. Nope. I'd have said no. No radio. I don't know why I grabbed it this round, but hey, we're not using it. If there's one thing we need to do, it's use radio on a regular basis. Yeah, okay. Not gonna do it. Tired of thirsty. It's not the best time or place to make plans for the future, but what can you help thinking about when we made this terrible situation? Is our house still standing? Are we still have to move to some forsaken hole like Toronto? You could probably just ask Ted. I mean, you could ask Ted for sure. <laughs> All right, she's looking a little tired. Uh, discuss after we get out of here, yeah. Right, she's just tired, but she can go answer the phone. <clears throat> Uh-oh, was that the dog? We answered the phone, we could clearly hear a gasp from the call. They introduced ourselves to the town of Hill Valley. Alright. Lorce is still tired, damn. Scratching at the door can only mean one thing. Our dog friend is back. Yeah, give him some food. I know we don't have a lot, but... Maybe Ted will bring back some food. Hey, there we go, Ted. Nice job. The dog is back to his former self in under an hour. We don't know what they what they put in that suit, but man, that stuff is good. All right, so his name's Pancake now. I like it. And he got two cans of soup. He's hungry though. Should have maybe eaten the soup when he was out there, but hey, I get it. It's dangerous when you're out there in the waste. Dolores' estate is too feeble. We can't let her go. All right, no expeditions for now. 
Stumbled upon a weird signal and changing radio frequencies. Pretty sure that behind layers of terrible static you hear a voice speaking a foreign language. Let's see. Day 19. Right. We were relieved at first and figured I wasn't so uh, Canadians. All right. And what is hungry and thirsty today? She's fine. We could probably send her out. How about that lake we've been going to the past few years? Yeah, that was nice. Maybe Dolores will head out there to the lake. Day 20. Day 20, just adults. No kids. Woo. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure they'd much rather have all their family there, but they're eating a lot less food, though. So we would definitely be out of food if we had everybody here this time. Enough sitting around. It's time to visit the service and look for some additional supplies. Should definitely be Dolores, and she should just take the gas mask. Gotta be safe. Take that gas mask. Don't want anybody getting sick. Day 21. There you go, Dolores. All right, Ted. You're doing fine. Ted is fine. Yep. <laughs> See? I told you. I told you he was fine. Uh, someone who can rescue us from the health situation is the government. No thanks. No, thank you. <clears throat> Been rescued by the government too much already. Thirsty and hungry. You got it, Ted. A woman came by with a creature she claims is a camel, provided the camels have five legs. The animal's carrying a pack of goods for trade. Two water in exchange for a first aid kit. One in exchange, four in exchange for a radio. Done. We don't use the radio that much. Give us all that water. That's a crazy amount of water you just gave us, lady. Yeah, we're set. Nine and a half bottles of water. We don't use the radio anyway. I've been ignoring it the entire time. Hey, it's Pancake! Our friend is back, but he seems very nervous, and he keeps barking and jumping. When we open the door, he rushed out, not only come back a moment later and bark at us again. Maybe we should follow him. What gear should we take? A rifle. Day 24. All right, Pancake, what was it? Rifle's still fine. That's good. The old saying goes, better safe than sorry. The rifle seemed to be the right place to choice to give for venturing out in the unknown. We didn't expect to run into trigger happy folk who started shooting before asking questions. Gunshots were enough to send Pancake running. We got back safely, but it didn't show up. Shit. Well, shit, Pancake. A sleazy-looking trader carrying an Ill equally scruffy bag in his shoulder pays the visit. One can of soup, bag, and all its contents. I think this is how we get the cat. <clears throat> yeah, and I want the cat. I do want the cat. Cat's very interesting. Now I need food, fairly desperately. <laughs> I didn't eat. I, I did trade my last can of food, my last full can of food, for a cat. Open in the name of freedom. Mm, pass. I'm gonna pass on that one. Day twenty six. Somebody's knocking on my door again. We stayed silent until the group on the other side went away. Time to ration supplies. Hungry and fatigued. All right. We found an anonymous note next to our shelter door. Whoever wrote a request that we send one representative to a meeting tonight in a set location. The person must come unarmed. This bit worries us. The author assures us here she is friendly doesn't mean to hurt us. So we're going to send someone to check it out. Sure. Send Ted. Why not? Day 27. Alright. We're going to buy twin siblings. Hey, it's the twins. They're nice. We remember them. He's just fatigued. He's fine. A little scared today when all of a sudden our map fell off the wall. Maybe our shelter's haunted? When the map fell down, it revealed some sort of safe behind it. We don't remember installing it, but we can probably crack it. Well, we technically have all the time in the world. Should we try it? Yeah, try to crack it. It's the worst that could happen. Hey, is Dolores back? That'd be awesome. She brought back some food. All right. Gas mask got damaged. We're not sure how or why a map just decided to slide off the wall, but lucky that it happened since inside we found some supplies. So a radio and some bug spray. She found two cans of food and two water. Lost the gas mask. That's all right. Hungry, tired, fatigued. Just fatigued and thirsty. Ted seems to be in really good shape for a trip. Yeah, let's send Ted. Can't keep sitting on our backs on this tiny little bunker. We can start thinking about getting as far away as possible from this radioactive wasteland. Who thought the Reds would have such a lovely neighborhood? We could do it on our own. The escaping part, not the ruining part, of course, however. However, these might be someone who can help us. Let's keep open our eyes and ears. Yeah, we'll listen once to the radio. See what happens, but I don't want to do the military rescue. Let's see, what was it? We made contact. The military's out there. Pass. Hired Tungry, hired Tungry, fatigued Thursday. He's just fatigued. Yeah, Ted's going out. There's no gas mask, but he can just bring the briefcase and maybe a map. That way he doesn't get lost. Oh no, I bet the twins will come by and want the map. So she'll hang on to the map. <clears throat> want to get in good with the twins. So he'll just take the briefcase. Maybe he can bring some stuff back. 
All right, Ted left for the service. We'll be back soon. She's just hungry and tired. All right. We played the last things you hate. We played the game a list of things you hate the most. List of things you hate the most. And our neighbor name kept coming up for some reason. That reminded us that little weasel had a safe in his living room. Yeah, go find that safe, Dolores. Maybe it's full of food. What was in the safe, Dolores? Come on. Hey, a gas mask. Tired and fatigued. While trying to pet the little devil, we found a piece of paper on his collar with an address scribbled on it. Could his previous owner still be around and worried sick? Chances are slim, but maybe we should pay them a visit. Or at least whatever's left of them. Yeah, sure. Alright, so we took him back. Great. Before we reached the end of our street, we were stopped by two men wearing dark coats. Yeah, they randomly wanted to stop and do that. Okay. Weird. Someone paid us a visit today. It was an overly cheerful red-haired woman accompanied by a grumpy-looking mercenary type who was probably her guard. She told us she was a traitor and eagerly showed us the items she'd brought along. So, ooh, a first aid kit for cards? Hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Give us a first aid kit. That fucking rules. First aid kits are like gold out here. We managed to work out a deal. The woman also gave us some tips about surviving in the wasteland, but her advice seemed pretty useless. We already know that radiation is dangerous, and that hitting a rat with a stick will eventually kill it. We thanked her and said our goodbyes. Tired and fatigued still. That's all right. Oh, he claimed to be an accountant. Ooh, sorry, no gambling. No gambling, sir. We just traded our cards for a first aid kit. Yeah, gambling's a terrible habit. I don't know, well, the kids are... I don't think I have to worry about what an example to set to the kids. I think they're they're gone. Mysterious sounds are coming from our radio, but they're hidden in a ton of static. Do we want to tinker with it a bit and find the right frequency? It could be something important, or the opposite. One way to find out. Yeah, tinker with it. <clears throat> hey, Ted's back. What did he bring? Food? Yeah, food. There we go. That's what I like to see. We managed to get slightly clearer signal after twisting some knobs and pressing some buttons. A female voice talked about being stranded in space. She said something about her crew members going insane and eating all the soup. Okay, so he just brought... Oh, soup and water. Dolores needs water and she's hungry. So both for her and he's hungry and tired. Ted is too weak for any expeditions. Dolores stays too feeble. That's okay. We can skip expeditions. We're good. Curiosity almost killed the cat. Sherikov found a tiny wire sticking out from the ceiling and pulled it out. Plasma and debris fell on our table, topped off with a big meowing fur ball. What is this thing anyway? Nobody remembers it being there before. The cat might get angry if we take away the wire, so maybe it's best to leave it be. Nah, we'll leave we'll leave him alone. I think if we leave the wire we've we've met we've messed with it both times. Let's leave the wire alone this time, see what happens. Right. We don't really want to risk pissing off Sherikov by taking his toy away. We've already gotten scratched for a lot less. Let's just leave it be. That wire's probably useless. So tired, fatigued, and tired. Oh, he's hungry and thirsty. Sending Dolores out as a death sentence, Ted's in no condition to go outside. It seems whoever it was, they met their end. After a series of terrifying screams, the radio fell silent. Just before that, a distressed woman recited her full name and address. She used to live in our town. She would take a hike to the house and see if she left anything of value. It's not like she'll need it anytime soon, having just been swallowed whole by a bloodthirsty monster from outer space. At least that's what it sounded like. Sure, yeah, hopefully she has food. Need to load up on food. <clears throat> hey, speak of the devil, loading up on food. And water. Plus two soup cans. There we go. Looks like Sherikov snuck out to hunt in the wasteland. Found a dead glowing rat. We're still tired. Oh, Ted needs a first aid kit. Good thing we have it. Fatigue, tired, sick. Tired, fatigue. When we hear a knock at the door, we decide to open. Our heart rate always goes up a bit. Fortunately, this time it wasn't some bloodthirsty raiders, but the brother and sister that we befriended some time, some time ago. They're quite ambitious. Together with their group, they're trying to construct a few houses and make a small camp. If we have an axe, we can help them with the construction. Yeah, sure. Why not? <clears throat> Why not? Ted's got that beard going, man. It took a few hours, but we managed to chop everything they asked us to, and even a bit more. Everybody was really grateful, and we got a lot of friendly pats in the back. Helping people and working together sure is a nice feeling. We hope we get to visit our friends in their new home one day. Fatigued and thirsty, and just fatigued. All right. Ted seems to be in really good shape for a trip. Let's send him out. Or Dolores. We were able to catch the military broadcast again. This time they're asking us to get out a flashlight. Nope, not gonna do it. Day 39. I think we're doing just fine. We don't need the military interfering. The signal has to wait. Besides, do they even know how much flashlight batteries cost? Especially in this economy. Especially after it was wiped out. <laughs> fatigued and hungry. And fatigued, thirsty, hungry. So he's both. Cool. Enough sitting around. Yeah, send Ted and give him the gas mask. And then, okay, yeah. So he'll just take the gas mask. That'll be fine. <clears throat> we don't need the suitcase yet. Day 40. 
That's what we like to see. What's up, Sherikov? How much water do we have? Eleven and a half. Wow. Okay. Dolores is no longer hungry. She's just fatigued. A scientist, at least supposedly, arrived on our doorstep, yelling, Dr. Sherikov, are you in there? He was looking for his lost cat, but kept referring to the pet as his favorite assistant. His research apparently can't go on without the cooperation of Dr. Sherikov. Since the cat doesn't seem keen on moving out of our bunker anytime soon, the doc wants us to compensate him by helping him with his project. In these circumstances, it might not be the worst idea to befriend the Wastelanders, even the batshit crazy ones. That's very true. That's apt. That's an apt analysis. How much soup do we have? Four and a half. Because I think, if I remember, he might want... I think I read something about like tips on this game and they said like scientists like he wants a lot of food and water. There has to be some water left, the Lord should get it. Fatigued and thirsty. Yeah, there's plenty. Our previous expeditions reported a strange vehicle nearby, and the last trip to the surface confirmed this discovery. It's an armored and weaponized ice cream truck. No wheels, no gas, just sitting away out there. And we turned it into an art project. Yeah, bring the rifle. <clears throat> oh shit. Do we have to shoot at something? Is Dolores okay? She might be banged up, I don't know. Oh, the rifle's broke. We stormed the local decoration store, shouting battle cries and shooting wildly, at least until the rifle jammed. We found the American flags and the banners we could ever ask for. The vehicle could lead a 4th of July parade or something, and have had wheels, that is. So what's the... <laughs> Jesus, wow, yeah, it's all loaded up. America! Fuck yeah! All hands on deck. There are people on the other side of the door, and they don't seem too friendly. In fact, they promised us a painful death at least 17 times already, and it's only been 5 minutes since. They're repair. They're forcing that door open any minute now. Padlock. Yeah, try to lock it. Day 43. We broke the padlock, but that's alright. We didn't think that small padlock would stop them, but it turned out to be enough to discourage the unknown attackers. It seemed that they gave us a whole break-in fair shot, but ultimately gave up and left. Too bad the padlock is in no shape to be used again. Okay. Dolores would really love to eat something. Well, you can eat food. You can eat food, Dolores. We'll give you food. The cat wandered out of the shelter and returned with a small note from the crazy scientist, urging us to help him with his next project. He's building some sort of vehicular contraption, but gave us no details. He only wrote that if all goes well, we can use this vehicle to get out of the wasteland. The doc told us to start stockpiling for the trip, starting with several bottles of water. He'll come around to pick them up soon. Okay, interesting. Day 44. Alright, what do we got day 44? Dolores is no longer hungry. Dolores will not last long without water. Well, drink something then, Dolores. Shit, you weren't thirsty yesterday. Sherikov seems to be fond of our checkerboard. It's his favorite game during stretches of extreme boredom and silence in the shelter is pushing the checker pieces off the table as he gazes intently at whoever happens to be sitting the closest. The sound of checkers hitting the floor every 10 seconds is getting our nerves and we're considering taking the game away. Should we let Sherikov play with the checkers? Yeah, let him play with the fucking checkers. I'm gonna get scratched by this damn cat. Just keep him happy. We might lose the checker pieces, but it's fine. Sherikov's bored too. <laughs> as soon as we allowed him to play with the checkerboard, Sherikov instantly got bored of it. It did sit on top of it for a whole afternoon though, leaving us with no entertainment whatsoever. The selfish bastard. At least it didn't break anything. Alright. The more we know about what's going on outside, the better for us. Nah. Nah. I don't want to listen to the radio. Uh oh, somebody knocking. Hello, who is it? Let's not play with the radio. We might break it. I thought I heard knocking. Could have swore I heard knocking. The doc came knocking on our door to collect the supplies you requested. They're important for his project. Said we could trust him. After all, he's a doctor. Four waters? Jeez. Yeah, they weren't shitting us. He's... <clears throat> Homeboy's loading up on water. That's a lot of water. We shared what we could. Thankfully, it was enough. The doc noted with approval and promised he'd come back before disappearing with our supplies. We're still wondering if he made the right decision. It was very unwise of Ted to walk right into the hands of a gang with filthy bandits camped nearby. He's not coming back. Shit. That's not good. Still thirsty. Man, we gave him so much water we still have. We can send Dolores for an expedition. No, we can't. Nobody's here. All hands on deck. The people on the other side of the door, they don't seem too friendly. In fact, they promised us a painful death. Let's play the harmonica for him. Yeah. Day 48. All right. Back to the old grind. Dolores is no longer thirsty. Dolores is not eating for a while. Well, Dolores, we have four food cans exactly, and I think that's how much we need, so you may have to be hungry today. Sorry. We were happy to host the siblings and a few of their friends today when they visited our shelter. We found out that the camp project is almost completed. The houses are standing and people are slowly moving in. But there's one more thing to think of. The children. And specifically, their education. If the kids are too gr if the kids are to grow up to be smart and able wastelanders, they need to learn. And to learn, you need books. Lots of books. So we have any? Yeah, give them the Boy Scout handbook. They've been good buddies so far, man. They've been good buddies. Yeah, Dolores really needs to eat something. She's hungry. Yeah, sorry, Dolores, but we have four fucking cans of food. I can't... Sign your boots and hoist the flag. The army's on the radio again. They're telling us to get our flashlight ready to signal the aircraft. No. No! I'm not doing it. And you can't make me, army. Day 50. All right. 
Day 50. The signal has to wait. Besides, do they even know how much flashlight batteries cost? Yeah. Hungry and thirsty. We can give you water, Dolores. I'll give you water. The radio bar has been silent for the past few hours. We need our news. We need our music. We all agree that if we refuse to cooperate, we need to meddle with it until it works. Nah. Don't mess with the radio. Leave it alone. Day 51. Dolores may have to eat some food. She's freaking starving. Sure, I expect technical issues. How much food do we have? Oh, yeah, she can eat. Okay. You eat and... Yeah, starvation. Yeah, you eat. Bandits at the door promise the worst fate we can imagine if we don't let them in. It's time to make a stand or surrender. Let's play the harmonica again. <clears throat> Unbreakable. There we go. Day 52. I got an achievement called Unbreakable. That's what I like to see. We live to see another day. Our attempt at producing beautiful, sorrowful music that would often soften their hearts resulted in a cacophony of hellish noises instead. The attackers ran away, covering their ears. No, you can't eat anymore. I'm sorry. The mad scientist asked us for, to join him in his lab for an experiment that's apparently vital to his project. We don't really know what to expect, but he says he has it for research on wasteland diseases. Is this something we want to take part in? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Dolores. I need you to do well. Day 53. Day 54, 55, 56. Shit. Okay, Dolores. Okay. Dolores on our way to the surface. Let's hope she'll make it back safe and sound. Our volunteer has temporarily left the shelter to help build a badass rocket that we can all use to get out of the wasteland. Let's hope we're not just wasting our time. Dolores showed up to the shelter after completing the mysterious experiment. She seems to stay in the docks lab took a toll on her. She was hurt. She is hungry. Dolores says she's fine. It's tough surviving these conditions. Let's hope this will be over soon or else we might end up dead in some wasteland ditch. Yeah, it's definitely not something I look forward to. Day 57. All right. Oh, shit. Dolores is looking bad. Oh, God. It's easy to feel a bit down when you're living underground. Dolores really love to eat something. Fatigued, hungry, hurt, thirsty, crazy, sick. Okay, food and water for you. How about the radio? Something might, might even be on the air now. Yeah, let's... let's Anything to boost Dolores' spirits. Because she is a, on the brink of death, and I want that rocket ship to space. Come on. Plus two and one water. There we go. No first aid kit, though, for Dolores. Let's give her food and water. Let's just keep... We have so much food and water. Let's try to keep her alive. Bands the door. Promising a worse fate. Shit. Axe. Damn it. Day 59. Shit. She lived? Oh, she's not doing great, though. We were able to fight off the bandits this time, but there's no guarantee they won't come back. We need to be prepared at all times. Our axe broke. Jesus. Okay, food and water for Dolores. She's crazy and hurt. Ever since we jumped out of our follow shelter, we've been wondering what that other door in the shelter is. Where does it lead? Yeah, use the flashlight. Day 60. Look at it. It's day 60 already, and Dolores is doing perfect. Look at her. How much water? 7.75? 7, 7 Spent at every corner of the room and found nothing. Well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> and give her food and water. She needs it. You'd expect the post-apocalypse to be a time of peace and quiet outside, since, you know, most of the people aren't around anymore. Yet here we have someone at the door. When we opened it up, we encountered a strange-looking man in a blue jumpsuit who asked us to trade him a water chip. A water chip? What in the hell is that? Okay, give him some water. Day 61. Come on, Dolores. I'm just giving you food and water. We explained politely we didn't have a water chip, but we're happy to share some water with him. The man was visibly disappointed, but thanked us for the water and even left his gas mask. Odd. Yeah, that is odd. She's in agony, so she's not doing great. Someone's at the door. We're a bit scared, but maybe it's a friendly face of an American soldier. Should we open? Oh, God. No. 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 Because maybe the scientist is going to come for us. Day 62. Come on, Dolores. I need you to do You look better. You look better. We're not opening the door. Who knows what's on the other side? Better safe than sorry. Yeah, let's give you some more food and water. Oh, shit. Did we die? No, we died. Well, guys, I'm going to end this one here for the day. Dolores, look at you and Sherikov and all your beautiful food and water. We didn't get to go to space this time, but I think we're going to be able to make it. So if you guys did like this one, be sure to like, subscribe. Who knows? Maybe next time we'll go to space. <laughs> I hope you guys did like this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye.